In this video, I'm going to show you how you can connect ChatGPT with your HubSpot and how you can make ChatGPT talk to your leads that you get through your website forms. Remember, all my AI automations in Zapier are in the first link in the description. All right, so the first thing is that I'm going to create a fake lead on my HubSpot account. I already have some forms created on my website, so I'm just going to go to contact us. And as you can see, I have this page where I am collecting leads for my contact us form. So I'm going to fill this out so we can have a lead that we can work with inside Zapier. All right, so I fill out the form with a test lead and in the actual message, I'm writing down, hi, I'm interested in your service. I would like to know more about Popups Land and also the pricing options you offer. I'm going to send this one and I set up the form so I'm then redirected to a confirmation page that looks like this. But when I go to my HubSpot account, I'm going to refresh this page and you can see we have a new lead over here that is contact us form. And if I'm going to click on the lead, I get more details and in the form submission, if I click on this arrow and scroll down, you can see we have the message that I have written inside the form. All right, so right now we are going to start creating our AI automation and we are going to continuously test it out on this lead that I have just created. So I'm going to go to create Zap, and then the first thing is that we have to set up our trigger. So I'm going to write HubSpot and click on it and then we have to specify the event. So if you click on it, you can see all the options that you have. But in this case, we want to search for new form submission. You can see that it has small description triggers when a form is submitted. That is exactly what we want to do. So we are going to choose this one. And right now you have to connect your HubSpot with your Zapier. You can do it directly over here. As you can see, I have already done that. But here you are going to be prompted to enter the login information for your HubSpot account and then choose the specific account that you want to connect. And then you are good to go. If you want to do this prior to setting up the Zap, you can simply go to my apps and then here you can see all the apps that you have already connected with Zapier. And if you want to add HubSpot, you can just go at connection, search for HubSpot, click on it, and you can see that we are prompted to connect the HubSpot account with Zapier. But here you are also going to get a button that says that you have to connect your HubSpot, so you can also do it directly here. We are going to continue. And in this case, we have to specify the trigger even more. Because I have created multiple forms that collect leads, just demo, trial, and quote, we have to specify which form we are talking about. So if I click on this, you can see I have all the forms that I have created inside my HubSpot. And here we have to simply choose the contact us form. I'm going to hit continue. And right now we can actually test this trigger. So if you remember, we created the lead because we want to continuously test this app if it works. So I'm going to go and test this trigger and it seems like it works. We got a green check mark over here and then we got the output over here and it takes the most recent lead inside this form. So we know that this is the most recent lead because I have just sent it out and the message is the one that we are interested in the most. All right, so we know that it works so we can continue with selected record. And right now we have to set up our first action. In this case, we are going to write ChatGPT. The event we want to choose is the conversation. You can see that it says, sends a chat to OpenAI and generate a completion, optionally storing messages as we do. That's exactly what we want to do. So I'm going to click on this one, continue. I have already connected my ChatGPT account. If you're interested how you can quickly do that, I have a video tutorial. I'm going to link it down below so you can check it out. But honestly, it's very simple. You simply have to have a OpenAI account and then you are going to log in and connect it with API. All right, I have chosen my account and I can continue. And right now we are ready to start creating our conversation with ChatGPT. So the first one is user message, which is required. This is actually where you type down your prompt. And so I'm going to type my prompt and then get back to you. All right, so I'm done with the prompt. There are many ways how you can structure your prompt. This is the way how I like structuring the prompt when I'm specifically connecting ChatGPT with any app. The first one is that I am always setting up a context. So the first sentence is saying, you are a friendly customer service for a pop-ups builder business called Pop-ups Land. You need to help to answer any inquiries that the potential customers have and that are sent out through our contact us form. In the next part of my prompt, I simply explain what the product is, what it does. So ChatGPT knows to answer all the questions that our leads have. And then what I also add is the pricing options. 
So because this is a subscription based model, there are multiple packages that you can choose from. So I'm describing each package and what features are included. The second thing I like to set up in my prompts when working inside Zapier is the details parameter. So here mostly what I'm talking about is the formatting. You don't necessarily have to do this, but I found out that this is saving me time. But if you don't like the output and how it looks like, maybe the formatting is bad, you can always go to the next step over here. And here you can go and use something that is called formatter by Zapier. And then you can put the ChatGPT output there and format it even more. But in this case, I'm writing down, don't write quotation marks in your answer. Sometimes ChatGPT does that. Don't write any text before or after the email. Write down a signature at the end of the email and sign it as Thomas from Popupsland. And then the last most important thing is that we have to add the variable to answer any messages that come through the contact us form. So this is where the actual AI automation is happening. If you click on your prompt, you can also add variables that you have generated in your prior steps. So in this case, we have new form submission in HubSpot. So we are right now able to use all the variables that are inside this step. So we have first name, email, but what we want to find is the message. And if you click on more, you can double check whether this is the email that you got from your lead and it looks like it is. So you can just click on it and then it's automatically going to be added to your prompt. The last thing is that I always add brackets just so ChatGPT knows what exactly is context, what exactly is details and what is the actual inquiry to answer. All right, so the next thing is username and assistant name. You can keep it as it is, but as you can see, Zapier is telling you that you can experiment with these ones. Then we have assistant instructions. I like to change this one. So I'm going to delete this one. And I quickly wrote down, you are a helpful customer support agent. Then we have the model. I'm going to keep it GPT 3.5 Turbo. And then we have a very important feature here. And basically what memory key does is that if you write anything here, it's going to keep all the chats within the same conversation inside ChatGPT. So then you are basically telling ChatGPT to remember all the prior outputs that it has generated for you. So you can write anything here. You can write numbers. It doesn't matter. But here I'm just going to write down contact us form customer support history. And we want to do this because we want to let ChatGPT know that it should remember all the prior history. So then the answers get better. As you can see, we have a very quick description over here. As you can see, you have a very quick description over here. If provided, this unique value will allow the assistant to continue a conversation from previous messages. And then we have max tokens, temperature and top P. You can leave it as it is. Again, in my video where I show you how to connect ChatGPT with Zapier, I go through each of these. So make sure to check it out. Basically, max tokens is telling you how much tokens you want to use. So that is going to lead to a longer output if you increase the number. And then you have temperature and top P. Basically, these two numbers change the output, how it's going to look like. So you can make it more random or more focused and so on. But we can just click on continue. And right now we are going to test this, whether it works. So as you can see, we have our prompt over here in the user message. And we are going to test this, whether it's going to create the email and answer all the questions that our lead has. So I'm going to test this action. You can see it's saying sending a conversation to ChatGPT. And then we are done. A conversation was sent to ChatGPT about two seconds ago. We get a green check mark. If we scroll down, we can double check if it works. And yeah, it works. If you go to response, you have content. And as you can see, we have a whole email generated over here that answers firstly what the pop-up slant actually does. And then also it gives us all the pricing information that the lead was asking about. And lastly, we also get a signature, best regards, Thomas from pop-up slant. All right, so right now we know that it generates the email. So we are going to click on the plus button and we are going to add another action. I'm going to search for ChatGPT once again. And in this case, we are going to generate a subject line that is going to be specific for this email. As you will see later on, we will need the subject line in order to answer the email from our lead. So I'm going to pick event, conversation once again, continue. And then in our action, we are going to write our prompt. So here in the user message, I wrote down, create a short subject line for this email. And right now what you can do is that you can go back to the prior steps once again, and then click on the conversation with ChatGPT. You can scroll all the way down and then you see something called assistant response message. This is the output that ChatGPT generated. You can also double check it by clicking on the more button over here. 
And yeah, it looks like the email that ChatGPT has generated for us. So then you can just click on it and then it's going to be added to the prompt. I'm going to keep username and assistant name the same. Assistant instructions for generating a subject line looks all right to me. Model is going to be 3.5 once again. And then I'm going to set up a memory key for the subject line conversation. This is going to keep the format of the subject line similar because ChatGPT is going to remember all the prior history. I'm going to keep max tokens, temperature and top P the same and hit continue. And right now we can test this whether it actually creates the subject line. And it says create a subject line and then our whole email is put here as well. So I'm going to hit test action, sending a conversation to ChatGPT. And just like that, we got the results. A conversation was sent to ChatGPT about seven seconds ago. We got a green check mark. Let's scroll down and double check. Yep, yeah, it works. So we have a subject line over here under response content enhance your website with pop-ups land service and pricing info inside this subject line is perfect so we can scroll all the way down and right now we are going to hit the plus button and we are right now going to create an action that is going to take the output of chat gpt email as well as the subject line put it inside our email and send it over to our lead so you can type any provider you are using in this video i'm going to use gmail I'm going to search for gmail and then you have to choose your event here in this scenario i would say you have two different options you can create a draft create and not send the email automatically so this is good if you want to double check how the output looks like maybe you want to add some more information if ChatGPT did not answer it and then you just press send inside your gmail or you can search for send email once the form is submitted on your website it's automatically going to send the email to your lead i'm going to quickly show you both so let's start with create draft i'm going to continue and then you have to connect your gmail or anything else that you are using such as outlook for example I'm going to continue and right now we are ready to start creating our email. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to just rename this and call it email because this is the block where we are generating the email. And then I'm going to rename this one to subject line. And then I can go to the first one, which is subject. If I click on this one, you can see that I have my conversations with ChatGPT. And because I renamed them, I have them named very nicely and I immediately know which one is which. So this is helpful for you to stay organized because in many times you are going to have more ChatGPT conversations in one zap. And then it might get kind of confusing which one is which. So I highly recommend you to rename them over here. All right, so right now we are in subject. So we know we go to subject line and then we are going to scroll all the way down and find something called assistant response message. Once again, this is the output from ChatGPT. You can double check by clicking on the more button and yeah, it looks like the subject line that we have generated before. So I can just click on this one and then it's automatically added here. And then we have to send this to someone. So in this case, once again, this is great. You can refer back to the form that the lead submitted and use the same email that they typed down inside the form. So I'm going to go to new form submission and here I'm going to choose email. Then you can set up your CC, BCC as well from but by default, this is going to be the primary email address. So you don't have to fill this out. Here you can adjust the from name. So here I can just type pop-up slant. This is how it's going to show up inside their inbox with this name. Then we have body type, we can leave it plain. And then in body, which is required, we can click once again. And here's where we are going to actually put our email in. So we go to email, scroll all the way down and find the assistant response message. We can double check with more button. Yep, it looks like the email and we are going to click on it and add it to the body of the email. Then you can set up your signature. But if you remember, we have added that inside our prompt, so we don't have to do that. But if you click on it, you can see that if you go to custom, you can maybe create a separate block for ChatGPT that generates a very nice signature. Then we have label mailbox and attachments. We don't have to fill out these ones in this example. So we are going to hit continue. And right now we are going to see if this one is going to generate a draft directly inside our Gmail. So if I scroll down, I can test this action. And just like that, we got the confirmation that the draft has been created. I'm going to go to my drafts and yeah, it works. So if I'm going to click on this one, you can see that we have the email we are sending this email to. Then we have our subject line. And then we have all the email structured very nicely with a signature over here. And right now in this first example, I can just double check right now whether all the information is correct. 
Maybe I want to add something more and then I can just send it over to the lead. But what if you wanted to do this 100% automated? Well, then you just simply go back to the app event and instead of create draft, you can search for send email, which is then going to automatically send the email for you so you don't have to confirm it with the send button. So I'm going to quickly show you that it works. We can choose send this email, continue, continue. And then once again, I'm going to choose the email I'm sending the email to, the from name, pop-up line, our subject line. Then in our body, I'm going to add the email and then I can hit continue. And right now I'm going to test this out, whether this is actually going to send the email directly to the lead. So I can hit test action. It says sending a send email to Gmail. And then we got a confirmation, it's been sent. And it works, as you can see, we have a new email over here that is from pop-up slant. So I'm going to click on this. And as you can see, we have the whole email over here that is answering the inquiry that we wrote down when we were filling out the form on the website. So that included the description of the pop-up slant, as well as more information about the pricing options. Remember that all my Zapier resources about AI automation are in the description down below in the first link. So don't forget to check them out. All right, so right now we know that it works. So either you go with the draft option or you can also go with the 100% automated one where the email is going to be sent out immediately to the lead when they fill out the form on your website. So then we just have to name this one Let's call it HubSpot ChatGPT. And then if I hit publish over here, the app is going to be triggered every time we get a new form submission on our website. Then it goes to our HubSpot as a new lead. We take that message and then we send it over to ChatGPT to craft the email. We also create the subject line and then we are using them inside our Gmail account to actually craft the email and send it over. All right, if you enjoyed this video or if you learned anything new, please give this video a thumbs up. If you're interested in more AI automation with Zapier, definitely subscribe down below because I post every single week. Thank you so much and have a great day.